We hear from experts to explain this winter's weather. The theater department is heading to state. Pool players are getting more kids involved in the game. And we talk with girls cougar hockey players. Hi, I'm Jabez Zero, and you're watching Eagle Zone. You might like the weather now, and if you do, you probably didn't like it a couple weeks ago when the temps fell below zero. Even though we're hitting the 40s, we can't expect too many of these warmer days this time of year. Or can we? Eagle Zone's Tristan Cunningham and S. Sashway talked with experts to find out what to expect the rest of this winter. This winter has felt really nice at times, but bitter cold at times too. Esau and I talked to weather experts to find out why and what can we expect for the rest of the year. Take it away, Esau. We are in a strong El Nino this winter. There's a long explanation that involves winds connected to the ocean, connected to the atmosphere. But at the end of the day, warmer ocean surface temperatures mean warmer temperatures for us. Kelly Sayre is a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. So El Nino, the pattern we're in, um, what it typically means for our area is above normal temperatures in the winter. That's usually what it means. Uh, but it doesn't mean we're not going to have periods of cold. We walked around and asked people their reactions during a January cold stretch that kept temperatures below zero. And how do you feel about the weather today? It's depressing. Uh, the older I get, the less I like the cold weather. Um, it's been pretty cold lately. Yeah, it's been real cold. Now as it's warming up again, what can we expect moving forward? The overall trend um, would be for warmer than normal temperatures to persist throughout the winter. But just like before, that doesn't mean we can't have cold stretches the rest of the winter. As for spring, Laura Edwards is a state climatologist. She says there are more factors that play into spring weather, so it's tougher to predict. And the current El Nino doesn't help much with that prediction. And so we don't see anything at the moment that really points towards warmer or colder temperatures uh, for the spring season. And another part of our winters is snow, or with the warmer temperatures this year, snow and rain. Edward says El Nino doesn't help too much with that prediction e either. We don't have a strong connection in the north central states with El Nino and precipitation in the winter season. By winter season, I mean December through February. Um, other parts of the country see a stronger connection, a stronger correlation with El Nino and precipitation, but up here in South Dakota, we don't. Um, some years were slightly wet or slightly dry. It's not very consistent. And what might we be saying this same time next year? So it's hard to say um, for sure what the rest of the year will bring. So we're looking at the spring El Nino dropping off basically, um, but we're looking at potentially a turn towards La Nina in the fall to winter season next year. So that would bring more likely than not colder temperatures again. We don't like to reuse sound bites, but it's depressing. Well, we'll smile about the warmer temps for now. One more thing, we did ask if we've been getting enough moisture this winter since there isn't a lot of snow on the ground. Edwards said rain around Christmas time helped a lot because the ground wasn't frozen yet and it soaked up all of the rain. So it's sitting there for crops waiting to grow in the spring. Thanks guys. One downside to the recent warm up is the temps lingering around the freezing mark. That can cause ice. Here you can see some video from a foggy morning that caused an icy commute to school. Police responded to multiple crashes as the school day was about to start. The operations department has been salting sidewalks to keep them clear for students and teachers. And the high school staggered release times if conditions are too icy to decrease the number of people driving in the school parking lot at one time. The K.O. Lee Public Library has a new traveling exhibit for you to see. The World on the Move is a Smithsonian exhibit that outlines thousands of years of human migration. You can see it during regular library hours through February 23rd. The state competition season is starting for winter activities. This week, it's the state one-act play festival in Brandon. Aberdeen Central is sending a group of actors, actresses, musicians, and others to compete in the event. Eagle Zone's Max Padal talked with the cast members and the director. Actors, actresses, and crew members will take this performance on the road as they compete at South Dakota's one-act play festival. Jen Loswald is the director. I think they will do very well. Practices have been going well from an acting standpoint, and practices have also been going very well with tech, and I feel like it's really coming together. Oh, Barrymore, come on, give me a break. The group is performing at 
shortened version of the well-known musical S Singing in the Rain, set in the 1920s during the big changes in the film industry. Central's drama department has a mix of experience and younger talent. Fresh freshman Joey Johnson is part of the plays assemble. There are some just, you know, when you do your first performance, there's always a lot of nerves of something could go wrong, but you just got to get that out of your head. The play has a strong streak to continue. Central High School has earned a superior rating at State, the highest a play can earn, for the past 17 years in a row. This is Lostwald's first year directing the one-act play at CHS. I, I am not really nervous about it. Um, I, I'm trying to focus on uh, making sure everything that I can control is in order and as ready as possible. And then I think that everything, once we get there, will just fall into place. I'm pretty confident we have a really good group, a solid group of good upperclassmen actors and freshman actors and we all work together and I'm, I'm really confident we're going to do well. The One Act Play Festival is this week in Brandon. Central performs Thursday the 1st at 8 p.m. Thanks, Max. We'll share results on our next video. The community has a group that meets to the play pool and improve their skills. And that group is looking for some younger blood. Charlie Gould is the president of the Aberdeen Q Club. He thinks it's important to get youth in the community involved in pool. The Q Club has been around in Aberdeen since 2012. We're getting older. There's a lot of us that are retired. And uh, we're, we want to grow the, the youth um, part of the pool uh, population. Recently, there have been some youth players that have started playing at the Q Club. Right now, uh, we've had uh, James and, and uh, several of his friends playing in a, uh, an adult league here for the last, I think, three years. Uh, they've all gotten quite good. But now these youth can be in a new league set up for people their age. It launched at the end of December. The organizers are going to try to get as much participation as possible. The club promotes players of all skill levels and encourages them to enjoy the game. If a younger player hasn't played pool before, it's, a, it's kind of an intimidating game, but uh, with a little bit of coaching and, and uh, uh, friends that, that play the game, uh, you can really learn to enjoy it. These youth players will learn to do their best in competition and learn the many things that go into the game of pool. You don't have to be the biggest, strongest, uh, fastest, uh, person to, to play pool. You, all you have to have is a brain and, and uh, a, a desire to, to learn the game. Reporting for Eagle Zone, I'm James Shook. Thanks, James. We'll be right back after these messages created by Media Production students. Come on, man. You need to see it through. Finish what you start. Oh. Hey, that wasn't nice. You need to own your actions. Yeah, you're right. I need to own my actions. Sorry, Jabez. I got you, pal. Bunting didn't work last time. You need to adapt your plan and embrace your strengths. Home run! Remember what you were taught. Reflect and revise. Yeah, I got this. S-O-A-R. Soar. Welcome back with Basketball and Wrestling at Home. It's been a busy stretch for the Golden Eagles. Gavin Bitch joins us with sports. Gavin? Thanks. We start with results from the Lee Wolf Wrestling Tournament. The Golden Eagles had a strong showing. Took a, take a look at these results for Golden Eagles boy wrestlers. You can see there were multiple kids from Aberdeen who made it to the championship match. Rain Zenz took second in the 126 weight class. Tate Hoff, same place, wrestling 132. And a second place finish for Mason Shrimp, wrestling 157. 
Eli Beagler won the 165 pound weight class. We have some video to show you from that win. He's up against an opponent from Clark Willow Lake when he gets his takedown to go, up by two. Then he adds three more to his lead with the back points. He goes on to win seven to three. On the girls' side, here's a look at the Golden Eagle finishers. Aberdeen had two girls make the championship mat at the event. Katrina Gibson takes second place in the 152 weight class. The Aberdeen senior is the defending state champion. And the other girl to make it to the championship round is Jasmine Mass. She wins the match. We have video of that win. The Golden Eagle athlete pins her peer opponent to take the first place finish in the Lee Wolf Tournament. Congratulations to the Aberdeen wrestlers. Now over to basketball. We start with the Golden Eagle girls facing the number eight seeded Pierre Govs. We pick it up early in the first with the Eagles down three when Lauren Burkhardt dribbles up the court into the paint where she finds Karen Hermanson for the and one bucket. Now onto the fourth. With the Eagles down big, Early Waldo finds Kaylee Donut in the corner for three. The Eagles go on to lose this game 47-37. Now onto the boys game where they face highly ranked A school T area Titans. Starting off in the first quarter, where the Titans are dribbling down the court, and that's when Parker Lamar shows off his defensive skills with this huge block. Now onto the fourth, with the Eagles passing the ball around the arc when Kobe Dawn finds Parker Lamar, who hits the deep three. In the same quarter, with the Eagles up, that's when Oliver Reif finds Grant Fritz in the paint for this big dunk. The Eagles go on to win this game, 58-43. The girls' Cougar hockey team is looking strong again this year, with only two losses midway through the season. Eagles' own Evan Howard shares that story. The girls' hockey team wants to go to state and do well, but that's just a small part of the team's overall goals. We're just trying to really have better connections this year and to keep each other going every single day. Just to like push ourselves and make each other better. I think we need to just kind of work on the little things um, so they're kind of building blocks to success, and I think we need to do better at that. Of course, if those things come together, success on the ice comes with it. The girls' Cougar hockey program is historically strong with a lot of championships in its past. Obviously we want to win, but uh, I think just having fun every game, even if we lose, and just enjoying ourselves and playing the best we can all the time is probably my goals for our team. I've learned how to work with a team really well and how to communicate with people um, to be as effective as we can be with what we're doing. The hockey lessons are extending outside the range too. Hockey has taught me how to overcome adversity with my like my teammates or just by myself individually and it taught me a lot about making friendships with different types of people and how to work with other with each other. Um, probably a little bit of leadership and uh, cooperation with other people and like group projects and things like that, so. But back to the ice, players want to do well and make this a season to remember. Personal goals, I just wanna try my best to be a good leader for my teammates and have fun all the time with my team, so. Um, I personally just want to make sure I'm doing my best every single practice and game to push myself to get better because I only have so many days left, so I want to make the most out of them. Reporting for Eagles on with Tune Lin Ning, this is Evan Howard. The Girls Varsity State Tournament is March 1st through 3rd in Watertown. Thanks, Gavin. That's all for this episode of Eagles Zone. You can always watch our stories whenever you want by scrolling down to the Eagles Zone section of the school district website. That's aberdeen.k12.sd.us. We'll leave you this week with some video of the one-act play. With Eagles on, I'm Jabez Darrow.